exciting times. We now have the rest of, or at least most of the rest of the drivetrain for four wheel drive power wheels build. Um, went and picked these up a couple days ago. This is a couple of Kawasaki Brute 4 750 ATVs. This one runs and drives just fine. So we're not gonna destroy that right now. But <laughs> the other one came with it as a parts quad. And that's why we bought that one, really. We didn't need the running one, but the guy didn't want to sell them separate. So we just bought both. And we get this one for the parts. The engine in it's seized, who knows why. The only part that's really been robbed for, from it, unfortunately, is the front diff. Here's the front diff housing. Somebody just took it out and pulled the gears out of it. So we can still use this to mock up or, you know, to build around and to know what size it is and how it attaches and all that. And then later on, we can either get a whole new diff or get the new gears for the inside of it. But um, it's a good little differential. It's got a locker on it. That's that shaft, a manual locker. Um, and it has an electronic decoupler that goes in there. So you can have two wheel drive or four wheel drive. Lots of good parts here. And in the meantime, we've got a four wheel drive ATV to play with and to compare it to when the four wheel drive power wheels is done. This is a 750. So it's gonna have a lot less power than what we're gonna be building, but it'll be four wheel drive, similar sort of, a lot of the drivetrain will be the same parts, so it'll be fun to like compare and see what they can do and you know, which one's better at what. Yeah. Um, I think the Power Wheels is probably gonna be better at essentially everything, but. <laughs> That's the know, goal. <laughs> we'll see. Potentially cool feature of this ATV too is the rear brakes are actually built into the differential. So there aren't any brakes out here, which reduces unsprung weight and rotating mass and all that cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> four wheel drive power wheels is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Just to show you guys how toasted this quad is, I just popped open that exhaust bolt and she's just dripping water from the engine head. <laughs> this one's done. Generally not a good sign. For once we're not destroying something useful. So we're figuring out how high we need to put the engine mm -hmm. to keep the head sticking out of the hood. Right, <laughs> and then how low the body has to be. So right now we're measuring where the engine is and we're gonna set the engine off and then set the body on and see what that looks like in terms of where we want it and then measure and compare and see what we can get away with. And then pretty soon we'll chop out the front of the Jeep so we can actually fit it around the engine. And then we have spacers in the mail so this is roughly where these wheels and tires are gonna be at yep. maximum travel. Yeah, that's actually very, very close. Like it, right now it's just sitting there, but that's, we have one inch spacers just because we have to adapt to the golf cart pattern. So 
um, that's very close to where it'll sit. Um, <laughs> Which is gonna my... be so sick. Today is a very exciting day because our adapters came, which means we can bolt these wheels up to our hubs here and see what it'll actually look like and figure out the clearance with the body and all of that and get started figuring out how we're gonna build this thing. Step one, bolt these beauties on here and throw the uh, wheels on. And then, it's snowing like crazy outside. We figured we'd throw these on the quad that's still alive and see how they do in the snow. Gotta test them out. Looks like we got ourselves some quality spacers. <laughs> yeah, seems to be holding up. Uh, I would not say it's an improvement on handling. Definitely not. Um, the wider stance means it's a little harder to turn because the rear has more, it, it's wider and it really wants to go straight. Um, and the front, it seems like the front's maybe a little easier to steer because they're smaller, but it also has more like bump steer and stuff because they're so much farther out. Not ideal, but it's what we're working with. It's worth it for how cool they look. This big quad looks so funny on those things. Well, if our Power Wheels Jeep can do that, I think we're in for a treat. Yeah! <laughs> and we'll have a heck of a lot more power and speed to work with. Oh yeah, because that's not, <laughs> that's not easy. Nah, in these conditions, the uh, CVT is kind of handy, but we'll probably have a recluse in ours, so it'll be kind of similar. Yeah. Except better. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, coming up that hill, that was full throttle. Yeah. I think the tires are pretty much, as far as I can tell, more or less equal in terms of traction in the snow. I think they'll be really good for, for what we're doing. We've run into a bit of a problem, very much an unforeseen problem, which is the drive is the wrong direction. This engine, the sprocket drives in its current position counterclockwise. You can imagine if that's straight chain drive to the rear wheel, that would be going forward. So that's the direction it spins. This rear diff, if you spin the tires forward, it goes the opposite direction. And so does the front. So if we were to drive it clockwise, we'd be going real fast backward. And yes, we're going to have a reverse chain case set up which is on the way and we'll explain that as soon as it gets here, but it's not designed to be run in reverse all the time. The two main options that I'm considering right now is flip the diffs upside down, which means they drive the opposite direction um, given the same input. So that would totally work, but most ring and pinions are designed 
specifically to be driven one direction most of the time. So if we flip them upside down, they might wear out faster or make noise or otherwise be less than ideal. Another option is flip the engine around, a chain drive down to a jack shaft that runs back to the uh, reverse gearbox, but that's a really little short little section of chain and it's just added complexity that I kind of don't like. And actually, seeing as how this engine, which came out of this quad here, is seized and has been full of water for a long time, I think I wanna just go ahead and strip it apart and see what it looks like inside there because there may be parts in that transmission we can make use of. That's healthy. There you go. Toasted. That's a valve. <laughs> Looks like the inside of the Jag when we... <laughs> yeah, it does look surprisingly similar. The engine's kind of where we want it. It's through the hood. Yeah. Everything looks like it's gonna work. Well, you know, there's just one or two uh, problems to solve yet. <laughs> Few things to build, but I like the overall situation here. Um, I like how much of the engine's sticking out of the hood, the height of the engine. I mean, obviously lower would be better for weight distribution, but that's about as good as it gets in terms of clearance on the differential and the body and everything. Um, suspension travel up front, depending on how much travel we have, we'll get, we're gonna have fender clearance issues at full steering lock and full bottom, but that's not too much of a concern. It's really feeling like it might happen. <laughs> yeah. Might be possible. There's been a few roadblocks already. I'm we sure. got the look right, now we just gotta get yeah. everything working. Well, you know, this is how we usually start it. I mean, minus the whole chassis, like we just take the body and we stick the engine in it and figure out where the engine goes and then work from there. So it's really no different this time. It's just, there's vastly more moving parts to think about. It's mail time. Mail time. More used parts from various different machines. Yeah. This is a chain case from a Yamaha snowmobile, much like the one that the engine for the Triumph came from. Uh, except this one had reverse. And it's all built into this setup here. Oh, that was upset. Um, so, the plan is to use this in two ways. One, to give us forward and reverse, and two, to be essentially a transfer case to split the power to the front and the rear. Um, not that it'll be selectable. They'll always be driven. It'll be selectable here with this solenoid. But um, it's a pretty simple setup here. Basically, most of the time you're driving the chain around like this, and they're going the same direction. And then you can see this extra idler uh, gear here. So when you shift it into reverse, it just lifts this up 
and engages that, and then it's turning it the opposite direction. And it disengages this sprocket so that it can spin freely on the shaft. That's cool. Yeah, and then you're going backward. And the good news is this thing's designed for something that makes well in excess of 100 horsepower.